So, hello. Before we start with the actual video, um, I want to talk about this movie. I just realized I could sh actually show you the disc. I didn't do that. I'm so used to podcasting that I maybe forgot that I actually can use visual stuff uh, in videos. So, there was a movie we were gonna talk about. Um, It's like... 1 a.m. and tomorrow I will go to Germany so I just thought I want to finish this video very quickly and usually my uh, before my plan was to release a different video before this but the other video is shorter but will require more editing and yeah I guess that's a uh, not gonna happen before I come back in about two weeks or something, but I guess there's still not many people watching this video, so it's fine, nobody will miss me posting stuff, but anyway, yeah, we're, I'm about to talk about One Percenter with Tak Sakaguchi, and uh, of course, I mean, it's, it's basically a review, but... At the same time, you can't review this movie without talking about several pretty nasty allegations. And that's what I'm uh, doing in that video. And just yesterday, um, they released a new statement about these allegations. And I commented about that on Twitter. And funnily enough... I I didn't say it, what they write is wrong. I just pointed out the things that I think are weird or questionable. And that just got me blocked as I just realized now. So um, they don't even like it if you comment in a way that's like, I don't get this, this point. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, they are pointing out some things from the files of that case that Shion Sono had. I, I will explain that in the rest of the video that will be clearer over there. And they just do some, some weird stuff. Like, they were very angry because some people uh, said that this case ended with Sono and that magazine agreeing on um the articles being deleted but the magazine doesn't have to acknowledge that they were wrong basically that's what as far as i know they agreed on and how they settled that case and now the production company weber tries to prove that the articles were actually wrong and they posted some quotes that I can't oh, show you anymore because I blocked me. I mean, I could probably get there, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, they point out, I think, three things. One is um, that the, somehow they, they make it look like there were the, the magazine pretended that they have more uh, witnesses than they actually had, which might be a mistake, it's totally possible, um, but doesn't mean that the things that allegedly happened didn't happen, doesn't prove anything, just that there might have been a mistake in the article. Um, that's possible, but I don't think that's proof of their innocence. And then they pointed out that the victim, um, after these things happened, still tried to have contact to uh, Shion Sono by giving him her CD that she recorded and things like that. And someone completely rightfully pointed out that, for example, in the big case with Johnny Kitagawa, the boss of Johnny's Entertainment and all, at least a lot of the talents that he sexually abused or allegedly sexually abused, um, 
actually still kept working with his company. So it's uh, not that rare that victims of sexual abuse still have contact with the person who did it to them. So that doesn't prove anything either. So that either? I always get confused with either or either. Maybe you can tell me. Um, Anyway, there's one more point here that they made. And another one was that there was a quote where the victim was asked if anything happens that she didn't want. And she said no. And there's a weird lack of context. So they put out you can go to the... Um, to the court where they, or the, the place wherever they keep the files and you can check the files by yourself to uh, check the truthful um, say truthful uh, what, what am I gonna say you can check that these messages are actually or these quotes are actually true um, probably relying on nobody actually going there and checking that like they probably expect that nobody will, will do that. So it's pretty easy to just take a quote out of context and say, hey, that's what happened. So I'm not convinced by these things. I think that's all a little bit weird and um, strange that they still keep sticking to this one case, probably because there has been, it has been a, a court case and um, the victim passed away, so she can't say anything about it anymore. So it's very convenient, probably as disgusting as that uh, may sound. But uh, yeah, I, I guess that's why they might do this. It's all pretty nasty, and uh, yeah, it doesn't really change my opinion on the movie. And my opinion on the movie isn't that great. You will. Uh, hear that in a few minutes but yeah it, it didn't really change anything for me I just wanted to point out that the statement exists and uh, yeah they still try to prove their innocence and I don't think they are very success successful in doing that anyway um, I will pass on to my past self uh, who wore a cleaner t-shirt, I hope. And, uh, yeah, have a nice day, and uh, see you probably someday. Yeah, I promise some depressing stuff that we have to talk about, because it's very important, and so we're gonna do that. As you can see, I just finished my uh, cute little toy video and I just go on to the next one. Um, this needs to get out of me. I need this to get out of my system so we can go to more enjoyable things like talking about another Yamazaki movie that might maybe not be as terrible as the other few. But what I'm talking about is a movie that recently got released at least in the west because in japan the release got stopped which is why this all became a big topic again and we're talking about one percent or in the u.s it's called uh one percent warrior and the u.s it got released by wellgo usa in england got released by third window films and first of all i want to say that i think it's a uh, good thing that this movie is available let's uh, say it like that because first of all we will talk about a lot of really really crazy bad stuff that some of the people involved in this movie allegedly did and even like with movies made by terrible people, I believe they should 
be available so people can choose uh, by themselves whether or not they want to watch them. I guess at least m most of us who watch them, this, uh, or who talk here, are adults and I think it should be possible that we choose what we want to watch as long as uh, the thing doesn't really uh, like as long as there's nothing illegal going on and in this movie there's nothing uh, that's actually illegal just the people involved are very very questionable and yeah i, I think you should be able to watch movies by questionable people if you choose so especially many people say hey i just separate art and artist and therefore uh, the art speaks for itself and it's not the art's fault that the artist is a terrible human uh, even though in this case i believe that you can't possibly separate art and artists but because of that i'm very happy that we uh, got the chance to watch the movie so we get a small glimpse into the mind of its producer and uh, star taksaka uh, therefore i'm i'm not gonna complain about anyone releasing this movie um and therefore i'm, I'm not here to, to complain about that i know many people who want stuff like this to be stopped from being released and i get that point um especially uh, but especially with older titles for example we will talk about shion sono quite a lot here and uh, for example he did some terrible stuff to some actresses and i feel like if they like endure the stuff to be in a movie um, it's, it's not so great to just make the movie disappear so nobody can see their work and yeah other people are working on these movies too and in this case one percenter there were some very talented people involved in different departments and I hope they will be able to do other great movies because uh, yeah why not um, of course, it's a little bit different if you put out a movie like this after these things came out. But like I said, I prefer having the choice to boycott these movies or support these movies or do whatever I like than just uh, censorship and uh, yeah, just prohibit the release. Of these movies if anyone is willing to put them out give it a try and if people hate it so much that it doesn't make any sense it's uh, totally fine that way and I, I believe this one um, just to, to put that out now I don't think it's a very good movie I don't think the circumstances and how it portrays Sakaguchi is pretty awful and after watching this movie i felt like uh, sakaguchi and the director yuda yamaguchi i don't need them in japanese movies anymore i really really enjoyed a lot of movies that sakaguchi was involved in uh, i mean let's let's look at his filmography he of course he was in versus i think uh, yamaguchi was involved in that as well and uh, for, for me it's easier to to forget yamaguchi because he didn't make that many interesting movies i watched a yakuza weapon which was pretty fun um there's some other titles that i'm still interested in and i watched a 10 night of dreams where his segment is like an omnibus film like um uh, 10, 10, of course, 10 uh, short movies uh, put together to be uh, going. Um, his episode was one of the best in that uh, movie. But um, yeah, he's, he's not doing that much stuff that I uh, 
I'm interested. Of course, he did a meatball machine, which I still have here on Blu-ray and haven't watched. It's something I will probably do it. But yeah, it's pretty easy. But as Sakaguchi, yeah, he, he did, uh, of course, Versus. He was in Godzilla Final Wars. He was in the First Kingdom movie. Recently, he was in Bad City. And uh, that one wasn't really popular in Japan, I guess. When, when I watched Bad City in the cinema, um, there were already allegations against Sakaguchi out, but not like the worst allegations, let's call it that. We will get to that point uh, soon enough, and then you will understand what I mean if you don't already know. But uh, yeah, he was in that, and uh, wh when I watched it, there were three people in the cinema. I was the first one who bought a ticket, and uh, usually, I, I especially since COVID started, I try to sit a little bit separated from other people, and usually just people are annoying in the cinema. Some people say that you can only enjoy a movie with a crowd, and I would usually agree, but... Um, when people start eating their crunchy snacks and maybe they sneak in some food that's packed in tin foil or uh, plastic bags that's super noisy or some people talk or when you use their phones that's in japan that's almost nothing and it's already annoying uh, I, I every time i hear a story about going to the cinema in the u.s I, I go crazy i can't understand how people handle that situation It'll make me uh, explode. Anyway, I, I was the first person who bought a ticket for that uh, movie uh, at that time, and two other people came. One sat pretty far away from me, and the other one next to me, just on the in the next seat. And later, I was like, "Oh, look, it's uh, so empty. I will go and uh, try a better seat." <laughs> um, pretty weird. I guess he wanted to make friends or so, but then choose a seat a little bit further away and then you can come over and talk or something. Anyway, yeah, uh, Sakaguchi was involved in quite a lot of fun films. For example, here, uh, Death Trance is pretty good by uh, Yuji Shimomura. And uh, yeah, he was in um, United Red Army by Koji Wakamatsu, which I have to watch. Uh, because Wakamatsu and all the stuff. So he, he made a lot of really uh, fun movies, uh, fun looking movies and uh, yeah, he worked with uh, Shia Solo in one of his uh, last few movies, Prisoners of the Ghostland, which I too enjoyed a lot and uh, even though the director is uh, probably even more questionable than uh, Sakaguchi. Anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm at the point where I feel like as a performer of action, Sakaguchi is still amazing. He's really, really great. And if you're just looking for well-executed action, you will enjoy this movie. Definitely, because that's what it does very well. The execution and like how it's presented is really really well done but there are issues that we will get into later let's talk a little bit about these allegations uh, tom mess brought them up he made a big twitter thread and he basically started with a like little surprise like he felt surprised um if because he said if you look at the English Twitter and the Japanese Twitter, or at least his feed, the English part of the feed is very excited about 1% as uh, some people already saw it at some festivals and uh, made a lot of hype and said how great it is. So there are many people who really, really like this movie. I think it's pr pretty bad, but uh, it gets a lot of praise from the action crowd. So there's a good chance if you enjoy well executed action, you will enjoy this movie. Anyway, and yeah, the English speaking part was excited, the Japanese speaking part not. So he put together some informations about the allegations and of course 
with all that, we have to go back two years to the uh, Shion Sono allegations because Sakaguchi was involved there as well. Um, an actress, I think her name was Mila Mila Chiba. Yes, Mila Chiba. Um, said that she went to a party uh, that was um, held by Sakaguchi and his uh, boys and when she wanted to go home one of the other guys tried to stop her and tried to make her stay and she didn't feel comfortable with that so at some point Sakaguchi came and she went and uh, later to apologize he came up to her and said, hey, let's go to Mr. Sono and uh, he's having a party there. Uh, let's go there, have a drink. And while they had a little drinking party, he got a phone call, left the building or the apartment. And then Sono tried to uh, have sex with her in a very uh, unpleasant way. That's what she said. That's all allegedly mm -hmm. true yeah so i for my part i think why should we not believe these victims um but uh yeah many people didn't believe her and just to mention that beforehand um this all led to her ending her life sono started to fight these allegations because he said oh that's not true that's not what happened and uh, he started to sue people he started to sue the magazine that printed these allegations and um, at some point in these allegations there was a mr t mentioned like everything that she said uh, was Mr. T. She didn't mention him as Sakaguchi. A lot of these allegations have these uh, one letter names. Later we have allegations where it's about Mr. T, Mr. Y and Mr. S. Um, if we have uh, Mr. Yudai Yamaguchi and uh, Mr. Tak Sakaguchi, whose name is usually shortened to Tak and three dots, and uh, Mr. Shion Sono, you can figure out who might be talked about here. And yeah, uh, Sono fought these allegations and Sakaguchi made a YouTube video where he apologized for things that might have caused uh, trouble for others, but he didn't really apologize to the victim. Um, Anyway, the existence of this video is just a, a fact. Um, he apologized. He said, yeah, that's me in the story. And um, yeah, Sono kept fighting these allegations. And at some point, he and the magazine decided to delete the articles about these things. But they didn't have to say that they are wrong. That will be very important later and uh, yeah basically we make a time jump uh, Sono is still not working again he tried to come back uh, under a fake name uh, he wrote a script and uh, was involved in the production of a movie that one of his uh, directing assistants uh, wanted to direct or he directed and this movie got barely shown i think one theater in tokyo showed it and it got shown in a festival in poland i think where they did a big sono uh, retrospective pretty tasteful i guess um anyway so sono couldn't really come back. There was uh, too much of a scandal about his try um, with this just script under fake name. But 
at some point uh, Sakaguchi kept doing his YouTube channel, uh, showing his fighting skills and stuff. And at some point they announced this movie. And for me, it seemed like, okay, he was involved in this one thing, but what he actually did was taking this lady to a party and then left her there, which can be just a coincidence. It's possible. And you know, if, if there's nothing more coming up and nothing, he doesn't do anything else, I can be okay, okay, let's, uh, if there's doubt, let's uh, hope he's not such a terrible boy. Yeah, but I didn't notice there's uh, much more. So, uh, yeah, when they now try to release a movie in Japanese cinemas, um, some Japanese uh, customers and directors and so on got pretty upset and said that this should all be a uh, cleared before they show a movie like this and the cinemas especially the Eurospace in Tokyo um, just decided to not show it any more and yeah uh, Thomas presented some more articles um, where uh, they go into some details what Sakaguchi himself uh, allegedly did uh, for example here it says uh, T is a good uh, is good friends with a male film director named Y who has shot live action gag manga and movie about popular idol groups and the actress is an offering to Y. Yeah, and uh, here it goes on with T like Y is close with S a cult director. But as drinking parties are even worse. The three men participating were T, a friend of T, and S. But the power relationship is such that S is the only man who can have sex with a girl. And uh, yeah, there's some other stuff like, uh, like Sakaguchi allegedly uh, choking women for fun or... Um, uh, uh, the ladies who were promised to get acting roles in Sonos movies for having sex with him uh, said that they got like tiny roles as extras or like no lines and nothing just standing somewhere in the background which is pretty funny if you consider um, Sonos very very good movie Red Post on Asher Street where he basically presents the production of a movie in a way where the producers try to sneak in untalented female actresses uh, because they were sleeping with them and portrays us as really disgusting and bad and uh, it doesn't really uh, support uh, talented people and they get just pressured out of the movie industry while uh, ladies without any talent who are willing to have sex with producers get roles and stuff and it's it's really absurd how a man who makes movies with good messages like this suddenly turns out to be like that and it's really weird yeah anyway uh, uh sakaguchi um got some other like allegations um, there's a, a forum post that showed up where uh, was explained that Sakaguchi has such a bad reputation that even his manager um, when they go abroad uh, won't leave his side because he is so known for his pretty bad behavior in a sexual way and uh, yes it doesn't really speak for him and there's another um, a tweet by a, a film critic his name is Tomohiro Machiyama 
uh, where here is a machine translation as a screenshot by Thomas. And it seems that uh, Mila Chiba is not the only victim of Tak Sakaguchi. I've also heard directly from women who were victims of Mr. Sakaguchi himself. I think a clear explanation from Mr. Sakaguchi is necessary. And um, yeah, they tried to explain these things and they made a really, really long statement. Oh, here's another interesting thing that uh, Mr. Sono's assistant uh, said, I quote, uh, I have a message from Mr. Sono for Mr. Taku. He said, I'm not feeling well, so I'd like you to invite the girl that X and I had a 4P with over to my house again. A 4P usually refers to a foursome. Um, yeah, uh, in, in another article, Sono pretended that they actually um, meant uh, four player video games, which I don't really believe, but uh, yeah. Anyway, as I, they put out a really long statement and they said that their innocence was proven by some police investigation that nothing uh, was shown of. Um, the, um, uh, uh, his boss, basically, uh, from the production company Weba, uh, he said uh, that he saw proof of many, many things that uh, prove his innocence and uh, like messages and stuff. Um, and they basically blame uh, Miss Chiba for everything. I guess it's convenient that she is not living anymore. And they completely focus on this one case. They never mention any other allegations. It's always just this one because I guess because this was like closed. They made a deal and they even lied about this deal because they basically said that uh, it was proven that the articles are wrong, but like I mentioned before, they agreed that the articles get deleted, but nobody decided that they were incorrect. So, yeah, they make a, up a lot of stuff. I, I, I assume they make, they're they making a lot of stuff. Because there's a lot of talk, like stuff is proven, and we have proof, and we saw proof, and nothing gets presented to you as a reader. And I think that's very, very weird. If you, know, you have proof, you better show the proof. And if the police said something, maybe you should uh, show what the police actually did, because I have no idea how the police could decide what is true and what is not. They can probably do an investigation and come to the conclusion that they don't have proof for the allegations. But how can they prove the allegations are wrong? I, I don't know. I would like to know. I would love to know. And uh, yeah, like I said, they just basically blame the victim and they complain a lot and they make themselves the victims. They present themselves as the victims. And uh, there's a lot of crying and they're complaining how much trouble this caused to the people involved in the production of this movie and the people at the cinemas and the whole film industry uh, like people complaining about sexual harassment and sexual violence um, are destroying the film industry and uh, it's really really crazy what they did there at least it seems crazy to me of course there's a slight chance that all they wrote is true but if you ask me, they made themselves look like a bunch of big fat liars. Like the more they try to explain and tell you that they are innocent or Sakaguchi is innocent, um, the less I believe because it's just not plausible and there's nothing really believable. It just 
their word and uh, here of course the Weber guy's word. But they're trying to get this movie out together. Hmm. Not sure what to think of that. And yeah, it's all very, very embarrassing, I feel. But at least the same as the movie later turned out to be, it's more like you can look into their brains and see how they work and see that it's all pretty nasty up there. So let's talk a bit about the movie finally after all like a 30 minutes we can finally talk about the movie um it's about a movie star or uh, not a star some action actor who is being played by action actor tak sakaguchi and he is very sad and frustrated um but before we get there we got a lot of praise from real fighters legend Legend or legends of real world violence, like this one guy who always appears in Sakaguchi's videos, who I think trains the uh, self defense forces and stuff like that. Who probably can fight, I'm not gonna doubt that. And there's an MMA fighter, and all these people who say, Yeah, Tuck is the real deal, he's the hardest man around. The MMA fighters, like, Oh, if we had a MMA match I might win but if we had a street fight oh my god this guy would kick my little uh, popo and um, yeah of course this uh, self defense uh, self defense forces dude it's like oh yeah if he wanted to join us he could join us anytime because he's such a tough guy he can handle the battlefield basically so we got a lot of praise and then there's a scene where Sakaguchi sits there and he made this movie Born. Might be a oh no, birth, birth, sorry. Might be a reference to his movie Reborn. And this movie here, the one percenter, plays ten years later, and Birth was quite a indie hit and went international on the festivals and people liked it. Basically like Reborn. Which is a pretty good movie. I really like it. And um, yeah, anyway, he's complaining a lot about the film industry and he wants to show the world real action. Yeah, that's his whole shtick here that he wants to present real action. Sounds cool, cool. I, I love real action. Probably, I guess, if it's like here, I don't like real action, but we will see the action we will get in this movie is not real at all. Uh, anyway, he, like, basically the first, I don't know, 10 minutes or something is just presenting him as the greatest, toughest, best dude ever. You haven't seen anyone like him. And then we get to a film set where he plays the right hand man like the uh, boss before the final boss like usually traditionally in action movies a guy who can actually fight because your real big boss usually can't fight it's the guy with a suit and a gun and his right hand man is a tough fighter so that's what he is here in a movie that looks very much like the Rurouni Kenshin live action film and they do a lot of wire work and stuff, which is, of course, uh, for him, just fake poo-poo. And um, he doesn't really enjoy it and he gets bullied by everyone because nobody takes him seriously and gives him the respect he deserves. And uh, there's this uh, assistant director, probably, who tells stuff like, Oh, I worked on Hong Kong movies. I, you telling me I don't know about action? Which sounds arrogant, but if you present it like that, it makes you look like you are pooping on Hong Kong action movies. Do you really want to do that? If you like action movies, do you want to like present Hong Kong action as silly, stupid stuff? Same with the... Kenshin movies, I think they're pretty great, especially the action scenes. 
why would you want to present that as bad and evil and the enemy of a real action star that is just silly uh you looking down on others so it's it's just they are trying to present him as the underdog but the only thing you get from it is that he's like a tunibio he believes he's special you know like the tunibio is like junior high school students like 12 years old and they're oh i'm special i'm a superhero or something like that and um yeah it's it just no, normal kids and of course he, i i don't i don't want to want to tell you that he's not a good action performer and he probably can fight i'm not complaining about that but um yeah, it just makes him look really, really stupid. I usually believe people who are actually good at what they do don't need to look down on others or they understand the worth of other styles. And he's just telling us that uh, modern Japanese action cinema is stupid. Hong Kong action cinema is stupid. Wirework is stupid. And that's all just... Uh, and there's only one way to do action movies right, and that's his way. And uh, that's not how you present an underdog. That's how you look like a, a silly little boy. Yeah. And anyway, from this experience, he moves on to shoot his big dream movie, The One Percenter, because he is the one percenter. He's the... 1% of people who can actually do it right and do real good action and he doesn't have a budget so he goes to all producers and he finds one who is willing to work with him. I guess that's real too because nobody wanted to work with him anymore, I suppose. Uh, yeah, anyway, they, they go to this like factory thingy on some island for location scouting and it looks really cool it's a cool set and then they meet some other guys who used to work with them and suddenly some gangsters show up and they're looking for drugs there and they're fighting their own people because the boss died and now they want to see who uh, is his successor or stuff stuff like that and Many people said it's very Metal Gear Solid-like because it's a big, scary, empty factory and he's basically then fighting military people. My issue with this whole thing, first, I don't think, it, of course, it looks slightly Metal Gear Solid-like, but it's not as smart or fun as it wants to be or as Metal Gear Solid, so... Uh, the issue is from there on they build this die-hard-like setting where he's protecting the daughter of the Yakuza boss and uh, when she wants to get away from him he uh, chokes her from behind or no, he grabs her from behind and said, says he could kill her any time he wants which is really weird if you want to present a guy who was allegedly not very nice to women um, in a positive light. Later he chokes the uh, bad guy's daughter almost to death and that doesn't fit here very well either. So that's all not very very um, positive to portray him the way they try to do like the underdog uh, die hard setting he's fighting the whole yakuza basically and he should be the underdog but the problem with every action scene that follows is that he doesn't even get hit once except for the final fight which is just ridiculous superhero BS. And uh, if you want to do real action, I don't think it's like that, unless you believe that you're a crazy superhero who can beat a million guys without even being hit once. And uh, 
Sakaguchi made this movie uh, uh, Crazy Samurai Musashi, I think it was, where he fights 400 people and wins, but that was way more believable because you could see him getting tired, he got some hits, it was really nice, interesting, it was a one-shot, so you could see how he's actually in real life getting tired of fighting so many other people. And here he's just doing it very easily and doesn't get punched at all. And it's just so boring because it doesn't give us what Die Hard did. Because in Die Hard, John McClane could barely survive. He did it in the end, but it was really, really hard. And uh, he had to fight through it and not just punch everyone until they fall down. Of course it looks nice, it's well done, but it's just boring superhero stuff and if you open your mouth so wide to tell everyone that you are the uh, hottest stuff around and you're doing it real, you're doing real action, why are you giving me the superhero stuff? Like Sure, they want to try to make fun of other action movies, like at one point they play some classical music and then you got this fight, I think it's in slow-mo as well, and uh, yeah, doesn't really work for me. There's just no emotional connection to anything that happens. The only nice fight scene, I think, is the one with the flashlight because it's quite interesting and innovative. I haven't seen something like that before. And the final fight, when he's fighting this real-life uh, Jet Kundo master Togo Ishii, uh, this seems to be his first movie, and of course they're doing a very good fight scene with great choreography, which is exciting, and finally Sakaguchi gets some hits as well, and we can see hey, this is a really tough fight and both are struggling. The problem is that Sakaguchi to that point looks like the Superman and Ishii has one scene before where he fights a tiny bit and you don't really get a sense of what he actually can do. So it's pretty pointless because you go into this fight and you say, okay, the two tough guys are fighting now, but you're not worried that Sakaguchi will win. And when he eventually does, of course, uh, his enemy has understood what a great warrior he is and gives him the greatest show of respect imaginable. Because, of course, everyone who's a legit fighter understands that Sakaguchi is a guy with very, very big balls, right? Uh, and on top of that, the bad guys always call him Jackie Chan. But we know Jackie Chan isn't a real fighter. He comes from the Peking Opera. And he uh, is more like a dancer. That's not so cool. So, of course, I could say, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm Bruce Lee. Yeah. And, of course, because Bruce Lee is a, like, legit fighter who invented his own style, like Sakaguchi, who gave it a really silly name that I already forgot, uh, something with assassination. It's really bad. Probably it works, but the name is really awful. Anyway, um... They try everything to make him as tough and cool as possible. At the end, there's a little bit where they try to make him a bit more vulnerable and human, just to make him say, yeah, I'm tougher than this, and walking away. And it just, I don't know, I didn't get much joy out of it. First, because it's so close to these allegations, that uh, well, better to the way they presented him in their statement because it's all the same. On the one hand, they say, oh, we are so great. We're just trying to uh, 
make everything better and uh, make this amazing movie where the heroes are blaming other people for stuff. And he's the same. He's just uh, complaining and whining about other people who don't understand his genius. And uh, yeah, he's a great guy who protects women, obviously. Um, now it's just... just too close to all the stuff, it just presents him as such a loser that I don't really feel like I want to see him again. I mean, probably I will watch some of the older movies which he appeared in. And uh, like I said, like this final fight with Ishii, I, I want to see Ishii in, in more movies because he seems to be a really interesting fighter. And uh, here, for example, Kensuke Sonomura, of course, he did the um, action stuff because he's doing action stuff for every Japanese action movie. And usually he's the uh, uh, action director, which he was here as well. And it seems he appeared in this movie. I have no idea what he looks like. Probably was one of the first people who said what a great guy Sakaguchi is or something like that. And then I saw some... some actors and actresses that I would love to see again and the movie looks good so I guess the, the camera crew and all are very talented but yeah I, I feel like Sakaguchi and his director made such a fool out of Sakaguchi by trying to present him in this superhero race at first they sabotage their own movie because it doesn't work like that you can't tell an underdog story like that it's all just boring um except for these two good fight scenes um yeah it just it doesn't doesn't function even if you don't think about these allegations um it's just not very well written it doesn't really have tension mm -hmm. or suspense or makes the things I'm watching believable. Which I don't know if they try to make fun of other movies. I don't get it. Sorry. I, I was just seriously bored and disgusted by the attitude. Yeah, and I didn't enjoy this very much and that's basically all I have to say well I mean sure if you want to support third window films uh, please do that it's a great label who deserves support and I guess well go USA uh, are doing a good job as well I, I never bought any of their discs actually <laughs> Um, because I, I don't have many US discs. Um, anyway, if, if you feel like you, you want to buy the stuff, I won't stop you. But yeah, personally, I don't need these two people making more movies. Or at least if they, if they insist on making more stuff, they should maybe uh, be the tough man they pretend to be or at least that Taka Sakaguchi pretends to be and finally tell the truth and actually explain some stuff that happens and maybe it happened and actually apologize to victims and stuff that would be real that would be pretty tough I guess and I guess uh, Carriers won't get any worse than this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if they try again or if they just give up and keep doing YouTube. I don't know. Um, yeah, when, when I watched this movie, I was already emotionally prepared that I will have to tell you i guess that it's a really good movie made by terrible people but yeah I'm, I'm, i guess i'm lucky i don't have to say that because it's not a good movie it's not fun it's not entertaining it's well executed except the script which is really terrible and uh, 
yeah, I just hope everyone who's involved in this, except these two, um, has more luck next time. Well, hope I will see uh, Mr. Ishii again, because he's cool, seemingly. I hope he's a nice person, or at least not a terrible person, that's good enough. And, yeah, do with this movie whatever you like. If you feel like you want to see some action and you don't mind all this stuff, go for it. If you mind the stuff, you don't miss it if you just boycott this movie. I, I'm sorry, I can't recommend it in any way. So, yeah, maybe we will talk about happier things again. Next time, I guess now I've got all the negativity out of my system. So thank you for listening and uh, 